On today's show, Ford takes the hassle out of backing up a trailer, mobility services are eating into car sales, and a look at Hyundai's first ever plug-in hybrid. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for May 21st of 2015. Hyundai introduced us to its first plug-in hybrid vehicle, a Sonata, at an event in California the other day. While driving impressions are embargoed till next week, let's take a look at what makes this plug-in tick. Under the hood is a 2-liter direct-injected 4-cylinder engine mated to a 6-speed automatic transmission. A 50-kilowatt electric motor, which takes the place of a torque converter, sits between the two and is fed by a 9.8-kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery pack. With this setup, Hyundai has chosen a much different route than its main competitors, the Ford Fusion Energy and Honda Accord plug-in. Both use Atkinson cycle engines, eCVTs, electric motors with more than twice the power in the case of the Fusion Energy, and battery packs with significantly less capacity. But even though they're so different from one another, Hyundai expects fuel economy to be about the same, with more pure electric range due to the larger battery pack. While the hybrid and plug-in look very similar to the gas version, there are a few unique features. The front fascia and headlights have been massaged, with a much larger silhouette around the grille being the most noticeable change. The rear fascia and taillights also see some tweaks as well. A new instrument cluster, hybrid display on the infotainment screen, and charge indicator light make up the visual changes on the interior. The Sonata plug-in goes on sale this fall in California and Oregon, and will be rolled out to the remaining ZEV states sometime after that. Pricing will be released closer to that time. If you have a boat and hate backing up the trailer into the water, Ford has the perfect solution for you. The 2016 F-150 comes with a new driver assistance feature that takes away the hassle of backing up a trailer. As you know, the front wheels have to be turned in the opposite direction you want the trailer to go, which can easily lead to jackknifing. Ford's system, called Pro Trailer Backup Assist, eliminates this problem. The driver turns a knob instead of using the steering wheel to turn the trailer the direction they want it to go while using the backup camera. The truck automatically steers itself and limits the speed if necessary. It's a neat feature, but is this something you would be interested in? We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner, feel good about driving, Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. Fiat revealed a stylish new compact sedan at the Istanbul Motor Show called the Aegea. The car was designed in Italy and developed in Turkey, which is where it will be built. Its front end really stands out, especially the grille and the car features a strong character line that runs along the body. Under the hood, it's offered with two turbo diesels or two gasoline engines that can be mated to a manual or automatic transmission. The Agia goes on sale later this year in Turkey and will eventually be sold in 40 countries in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. The consulting and audit company Deloitte just came out with an in-depth study that looks at new mobility services. It found that car sharing in the U.S. shot up 34% last year. There are now 1.3 million Americans who are members of car sharing services like Zipcar. Deloitte says there are 19,000 cars involved in sharing, up from only 2,300 a year before. And it says that led to 500,000 fewer new and used car sales over the last seven years. And this trend is only going to grow. Deloitte says mobility services could reduce car ownership in the U.S. by 1%. That may not sound like a lot, but it would take more than 2 million vehicles off the road. And we've got another great AAH today when we'll be joined by Discovery's Hot Rod King, Richard Rawlings, who's joining us from his Gas Monkey Garage in Dallas. We're giving away three autographed copies of his new book, Fast and Loud, Blood, Sweat and Beers. So check out our website, autoline.tv, for all the details. And then join us at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for some of the best insider discussion in the automotive industry. That's today on Autoline After Hours. 
And coming up next, John responds to your questions and comments, and you said it. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work, Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. And now it's time for your feedback. A whole bunch of you commented on our report about whether or not Jeep should go more upscale. Tony Gray says, I see no reason why they shouldn't take advantage of their image to step it up a notch or two. Doug T says, if I was running Jeep, I would keep riding that momentum train to bigger and bigger profits. But John M warns, the Jeep brand has never been about luxury or high-end vehicles. And Rudy Boniface says, Jeep risks a bridge too far trying to go too upscale. And Walter wonders, whatever happened to thinking about models for the average consumer. Hey, remember the Jeep Wagoneer or even the Jeep Commander? They were more upscale, and that is where Jeep needs to go. Fred says, you keep claiming that autonomous cars will reduce traffic congestion? Explain your claim, as the cars stuck in traffic do not know if there is a human behind the steering wheel. Well, get up on a bridge or an overpass and watch a traffic jam develop. There's an accordion effect as cars bunch up and spread out and bunch up and spread out, that's caused by poor driving. Someone wants to move over a lane or maybe they're not paying attention and they slow way down, bunching up the cars behind them. That starts the accordion effect. With autonomous cars, you're going to eliminate that. Traffic will slow down during rush hour, but you're going to eliminate all the stop and go. Bama Theo tweeted out to us, watched your show on the CT6, how far down the food chain can they afford to push all that technology? Well, I think it could go farther down the food chain than you might think. Remember, Travis Hester showed us that super complicated aluminum casting that they use behind the front fenders. No doubt it is an expensive casting, but if they had done it in steel, it would have required 35 different pieces. You know, sometimes one expensive piece can turn out to be a cheaper solution. Lexus Fan 100 saw my interview with John Hankey, whose company just did a survey of how automotive suppliers rank the different purchasing VPs at the major car companies. And he's got a simple question. What does it mean, VPs of purchasing? Purchasing parts? Yeah, you got it. The purchasing departments at the car companies are in charge of buying everything that the company needs. Parts, components, materials, services, manufacturing equipment, and yes, even paper clips. Keep in mind that 70% of the value of a car is purchased from suppliers. In the case of a General Motors, for example, the vice president of purchasing has a budget of well over $100 billion a year. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments, and please keep them coming. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and remember, we'll be right back here again tomorrow.